guys, Samantha from GSMA Tutorials here and today I'm going to be showing you how to create an earring pair with these two uh, rainbow canes that we made a little while ago. So if you haven't watched that tutorial please do have a look at the links in the description below this video and you'll be able to see uh, how to create these canes. But put these to the side, they're not what we're going to start with. First you're going to need a sheet of black polymer clay and this is Primo that I am working with today and you want it to be at least two to three millimeters thick I generally just go with the thickest setting on my pasta machine and then you're going to want a texture stamp and I'm going to be using Melanie Mule's uh, I think it's called Abstract Marks I'll provide a link in the description below and I'm going to be using this one because I think that this pattern is going to work very well for this project Then we're going to spray that with a little bit of water as they release. We're going to lay our clay down and also just give a light spray on the top so that your fingers don't stick to the clay and pull it out of the mold. Well, not mold, texture. Then just press. I tend to use my fingers uh, instead of a roller, but you can use a roller as well. You would still spray a little bit of water to prevent it from sticking to the clay. Okay, and then just make sure that you've got a good impression. Okay. And there we go. Hopefully you can see there the pattern. Put that to the side, allow that to dry. And then you're also going to want to put this to the side in a spot where it can dry. Okay, and in the meantime, while we are waiting for that to dry, bring over another piece of polymer clay. And this uh, is about, I'd say, a millimeter thick or about half the thickness of your thickest setting. And this cane. I'm just going to put this to the side for the moment and we are going to cut this out. And I'm going to try and get the cane sizes as thin as possible, but they do need to be whole pieces. So if you accidentally um, have one where you shave off a little, where you don't, uh, where it's too thin and you cut off a piece, it uh, won't work. You need whole pieces. I hope that makes sense. Okay, I'm going to take these, lay them down, like so. Just bring those up together. They should touch nicely. Then use a piece of plain printing paper to so just gently burnish them together. Okay. And cut away this excess. And now I'm going to put this to the pasta machine on the same setting. Uh, On the same setting that the uh, back was run through but I'm gonna start with a thicker setting and then move it down okay, like so and I widened it rather than stretched it okay now I'm just gonna talk quickly about the cutter that I'm going to be using for our texture that we have drying and this piece I'm going to be using the smallest arch cutter in my uh, large arch cutter set and what I want to do is I want to grab a ripple blade and I am going to cut like so And that is all good to go for the moment. Actually, wait, no. One last step. Uh, I want to texture it. So I'm just going to grab this texture sponge that I have here. You can use sandpaper as well. Nice coarse sandpaper. Or this aquarium filter. And just stamp it. And I should have done that before I cut with the ripple blade. Because now I'm going to have to recut again. There we go. And the reason you will recut is just because otherwise uh, your 
can have a bit of distortion. Okay, now you can put that to the side and we will use that in a little while. Uh, bring over your texture, which should be mostly dry by now. And we're just going to trim away our excess. Like so, so that it is out of the way. Okay. And then I'm going to grab my ripple blade and I am going to cut. in a position that I like. So I will cut there. Okay, and now I don't need all of this. It's going we don't need all of it, so I'm just going to trim off that end. And that black can just go back in with wherever you keep your black. And now this has to be completely dry before we can move on to the next step. Okay, and there we go. Now I want you to grab some white liquid clay. And now you can use paint instead, but I'm going to be using uh, Sculpey's white liquid clay. But paint would work as well. But I prefer the liquid clay because it means that you don't have a surface effect that you need to seal. Uh, and also, um, this has a nice matte finish to it. I just find the finish is better. So I'm just going to spray, not spray, just put down a bit. And I'm going to grab a paintbrush and dab a bit onto my brush like so. And then dab that over the surface like so. And press nice and hard because you should be ending up with a bit of a texture. And this is also going to flatten our texture a little bit. Um, which will, um, it's just nice that the texture gets flattened a little bit in this project. Just try to get that mostly everywhere. Okay, then I'm just going to quickly brush that off and then go back over and just tidy up any areas where we have huge patches of white because that's not something that I want. Okay, and then grab your uh, filter sponge from before. Just press over the top and this is just going to remove a little bit of that white from the tops of the pieces. Now, there's so little white on here that if you are not happy with the result you could uh, always just mix this back up again and put it with your black and retry because um, there's so little white in there that's not going to affect the black. Okay. Now we will bring over this piece here and I want to fit them together. And actually, we should recut over here because, as you can see, it's been distorted a bit. There we go. Now let's try that again. You might need to fuss a little bit to get it to stick to sit together nicely, but it should sit together pretty well. Then grab a sponge and just along the edge here. Very lightly tap, don't tap so much that you're going to remove your texture. Just tap so that the two kind of bond together. There we go. Right, then I've got a backing over here. And move that to the side. And I just want to burnish this so that it has a nice finish on the back. Bring those two pieces over, pop them down, and you can very quickly do a gentle press with this just to get it to stick down. Don't press too hard. Then bring over this and find the middle line and cut. Okay, and now this might stick in the cutter because it is resting on a piece of paper, which will provide a non stick surface. Just peel that off, that is going to be scrap. But this you can just pop in with your black again. So, very little waste. Just gently going to push that down and out. Okay, 
and we can tidy up these edges later on once uh, this has baked. Put that to the side and we're just going to work with the next piece which is this. Get it out. Bring over another piece of clay and this is about again the uh, middle setting of my pasta machine. Give it a very quick burnish. And actually I should be burnishing this on a piece of paper so the back gets a nice finish as well. I am going to bring over my second largest uh, mini cutter and I'm going to find the middle and I'm going to tap it. And again it will stick in there and now the mini cutters are a little bit tricky to get out so what I like to do is I like to um, cut my lips over this to create a seal and then blow uh, like so. Okay, and so I've done that and by doing so it will push out a little bit of the clay so that the air will force its way out and then you can use that to go around the edges very gently get it. Now if you want to avoid that you can always just burnish the clay onto a tile and apply the backing later on but it does mean that you have to do an extra bake. Okay and there we go. So I'll bring over my piece here. And I have already done the other side. And there we go. So that is going to be our pair of earrings. So I want you to bake these pieces for a full hour at Primo's recommended temperature uh, for a full hour. And then when they're done, we can just do a little bit of finishing and tidy them up. Now something I have noticed is that I haven't uh, textured these actually before we put them in the oven. I think I should definitely do that. Okay, don't press too hard because you don't want it to stall. Okay. And then once I've done this, I'll put them into the oven. Okay, and here they are out of the oven, all done and dusted. So now we want to do the backs because they're pretty boring on their own. And if you were going to leave them pure black, you'd want to sand them. So I'm going to take a nice piece of coarse sandpaper. And I'm just going to scratch them up. This is a great way to create a uh, pattern on the back without having to do proper sanding or worry about a texture beforehand. It's so anything you, you can do is with any piece after it's been baked. There we go, you just scratch it up. I'm just going to rub that down with a cloth quickly to remove any dust. And then what you do is you grab some white acrylic paint. If it's a black backing, if it were a white backing, you would use black. I'm just going to pop down a little bit, you really don't need a lot. And then just rub that paint over the surface get it into all of those little scratches that you've made like so and then you'll just let that dry and we can then sand away or not sand away we can wipe away that paint afterwards and I'm going to repeat that process for these three pieces okay so I've done the other three and this is what our backing is going to come out looking like. So all you do essentially is you grab a wet cloth or a wet wipe, whatever you happen to have. And you're just going to rub. Act like you're sanding almost. And you'll find that that paint starts to come away. And this will get off most of the paint. Uh, but you will need to, um, because your piece is probably not going to be completely even. You might need to go in and rub it a little bit to get rid of some of that last little bits. And there you can see that creates a really nice backing. And this one I just need to do a touch more. There we go. Okay. 
Then I am going to bring over a bit of bits of sandpaper and I'm going to sand these edges. Okay, so I've got some 1200 grit wet dry sandpaper here. And all I want to do is just get rid of any um, rough bits I have around the edges. So it literally should take you less than a minute per piece to quickly give it a sand. Because I'm not trying to clean up anything. I'm just trying to get a nice uh, finish on it. Okay, and repeat with all of them and then rinse them off because they'll have a little bit of um, residue. So now the next step is just going to be to buff these. And now this is a completely optional step. Uh, I find that it brings out the colour in the black. And also it's nice to seal in the uh, paint. If you want to seal it in without uh, worrying about using any sort of wax, such as this Renaissance wax, you can always grab some, um, excuse me, you can always pop this into the oven for like 10 minutes and that will seal in your... Um, paint it or bake it nice and hot. Uh, but I just generally like the Renaissance wax because it will give the matte finish a slightly satin, take it from matte to slightly satin. Uh, and I just like the Renaissance wax. So just rubbing a bit on all of them. Then I'm going to grab a buffing wheel and a Dremel. My Dremel is a Dremel 3000. And we will proceed to buff. So if I twist this around, hopefully you can see there that it's just brought up a little bit of the shine and it adds a bit more definition to the piece. And so I'm going to repeat that process with these three. Okay, there we go, that's done. Now we are going to assemble our earrings. So to do that you're going to need to drill a hole at the top of each of your uh, main pieces. And I'm just going to use this pin drill, push drill for this. much better than a fully automated drill but it still gets it done very quickly and it's much safer okay and you'll do that with this one obviously and then as for these ones I want to position my hole over here at the bottom of this swirl And then we need to do one at the top as well. Okay. Repeat that drilling process with these two. Okay. So I've gotten out some jump rings that we are going to need. I'm just packing away these last two, three actually. There we go. We're going for these ones. You're just going to open up your jump ring, slide it through the first hole, pop the hole right at the bottom of the swirl, um, pop the piece with the swirl's bottom uh, facing, like so. I don't know why I couldn't get my words right there for some reason. Then take the other one, or the jump ring that is, open that up, and now this piece, it's going to be sitting like this if we don't turn the loop at the bottom. So what I like to do is I like to grab this with a plier, hold it nice and securely, and then just turn that loop. And then you can take the jump ring, slot it in, and slot the earring in, your wire in anyway. And there you go, there's your earring. Nice and easy. And here's the other one which I assembled off camera to see what size jump rings I needed. 
And so yeah, that is basically it for this tutorial. I do hope that it was helpful to you. Uh, keep in mind that, again, you can use any canes you want for this, but I really thought that these rainbow canes would work, work really well. Um, and yeah, I really quite like this pair of earrings. So let me know what you thought in the comments below, and if you haven't checked out this tutorial to see how to create the canes, I will leave a link to that in the description below the video. And if you would like to support this channel, please do consider becoming a patron. I also have a link to, uh, to that site in the description below the video. And on that site you will get free, vi well not free videos, but you will get videos every single uh, month. If you're on the highest level, you'll get like three videos every single month and you'll have access to like two years worth of backlog so please do check that out as it helps support this channel so that I can continue making videos every single week and as always I'll see you in the next tutorial bye for now